Have you seen this guy at the gym? <laughs> There's an imbalance. You just want to go up to him and ask him to please, please do some squats. <laughs> Perhaps some calf raises. I want to talk to you about another imbalance I've noticed. Maybe you've noticed it too. Society is focused on questions not answers. If this imbalance is real, you are at risk of not having the answers you need to navigate the world. You are at risk of not having the answers you need to navigate the kitchen table, the office, the classroom, or anywhere that important questions are asked. It seems obvious to me that questions and answers are both important. Questions and answers both, de both de deserve to bask in society's attention. If you ask the right questions and provide the right answers, then and only then will insight occur. Instead, we live in a society where answers are behind a cloud. Answers are seen infrequently and seldom seen by society's luminaries. For example, Voltaire's message, questions determine our character. Bono's message, questions are hard. Einstein's message, we should spend our time on questions. Society's message, questions are more important than answers. The imbalance is real. Let's lean in and explore this imbalance further and its implications. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine you're at a bar. Should you order this beer? I'll explain what I would do. Every beer in the world is either a lager or an ale. This beer is an ale. I like ales. <laughs> this beer is a Belgian ale. I really like those. Excuse me, bartender. I'll have the triple Carmelite, please. In total, there are 10 beer types that form a taxonomy of beers. The beer taxonomy is used to navigate your bar order. There are 118 elements in the periodic table to navigate the lab. There are six learning domains to navigate the classroom. Porter's five strategy forces to navigate the boardroom. Every question you asked yesterday, today, and will ask tomorrow can be organized into a taxonomy of questions. How many question types are there? There are six. That is easy. How many answer types are there? That is hard. It is unbelievable but true. We live in a world with a beer taxonomy, but no taxonomy of answers. Wouldn't it be great if you had a list of the right answers to navigate the kitchen table, the boardroom, the classroom, or anywhere the important questions were asked? When your young daughter asks you what is beauty, will you be ready to provide the right metaphor? When your coworker who has missed quota for three quarters in a row asks you, how do I close the deal, will you be ready to provide the right procedure? I'm here to share with you a list of six answers to navigate the world. More than that, I have come to believe there is an intelligence an ability to provide the right answers that each of us can develop. I refer to this ability as answer intelligence, AQ for short. AQ is the ability to provide the right answers to important questions. Today, we'll take a small first step towards rebalancing our understanding of questions and answers. The focus of AQ is answers, but no science of answers can exist without an examination of questions. We ask questions to benefit others. We ask questions to benefit ourselves. Answers are unambiguous in their intent. Answers are a hand up. Answers are selfless. High AQ is the ability to elevate your answers when the stakes are most important and the questions are most important. I'd like to share with you today the four most important habits of elevated answers that you can use today. 
high AQ habit one is answered twice. Both sides must win. We know great communicators win both sides of the brain. Great communicators answer twice. Communicators with high AQ answer the why, what, and how questions two times to appeal to the left and right side of the brain. The left side of the brain is logical, objective, and sequential. It prefers answers such as theory, concept, and procedure. The right side of the brain is creative, subjective, and random. It prefers answers such as story, metaphor, and action. Let's look at three examples to illustrate answer twice. I had the good fortune to interview a highly decorated and experienced Navy SEAL. I asked him why he was successful. He answered this why question with a story. He explained to me his mission was to capture or kill insurgents in the Philippines who had beheaded locals. He approached the hut of the, of the village elder in his heavily armored Hummer. He proceeded to exit the Hummer, and then he took off his body armor. He proceeded to go directly inside the hut and sit on the floor next to the village elder. The meeting went well, and several weeks later, the village elder gave over the names of the insurgents. This is a story. A story provides an answer to a cause and effect relationship with emotional impact. Theory is the logical counterpart to story. According to resource theory, there are six resources that our Navy SEAL could provide to the village elder. At one extreme, he could provide money, an economic resource. At the other, other extreme, he could provide involvement, a type of social support. Our experience seal identified that in all of his years of service, the most important resource he could provide to others in order to achieve success and accomplish his missions was status. Our experienced seal provided respect or status when he took off his body armor as he exited the Hummer and sat directly next to the village elder. In contrast, an inexperienced seal would do the opposite and actually erode status. The inexperienced seal might leave, leave his body armor on, go inside, and sit directly opposite from the village elder. I interviewed a top-rated golf instructor, and she had a very interesting niche. She taught Cy Young pitchers the game of golf. One of these pitchers asked, what is dynamic balance associated with the golf swing? Dynamic balance relates to the physics of the golf swing. This what question can be answered twice. First, the concept of dynamic balance can be defined. Dynamic balance relates to the point of balance in your body and how that point of balance changes as you rotate through the golf swing. A metaphor can also be used to explain the concept of dynamic balance. The swing in golf is like the blank in baseball. If you think the swing in golf is like the swing in baseball, like I did, you're wrong. The swing in golf is like the throw in baseball. The dynamic balance is the same. Perhaps you Google this question. If you did, Google returned something called a recipe. A recipe is a procedure of sequence actions. Procedures and actions are related but distinct. When we refer to the 10 steps of baking a cake, we're outlining a procedure that appeals to the left side of the brain. When we identify any given step of that procedure, such as cracking an egg, we are identifying an action that appeals to the right side of the brain. High AQ habit two is answer in context. For any given answer to be effective, it must reflect the context, when and where. Imagine you're at a job interview. You were in the lobby. Now you've been taken to the interview room, awaiting the interview. You have done your research, and you know the company has employee turnover issues. The interviewer enters the room, and the pointed questions are asked. You did your homework. You throw down like a hammer with your best theory of employee turnover, and your best story of how you reduce turnover as a manager. Now imagine the context changes. 
No problem. You did your homework. You throw down like a hammer with your best theory of employee performance and your best story where you increased performance as a manager. More generally, all six answers must reflect the context when and where if you want to get the job. High AQ Habit 3 is provide complementary answers. Any given answer can be complemented by two additional answers. I'll explain. This is not a mere circle. This is a circumplex, a circular ordering of variables which holds that any given answers can be complemented by two adjacent answers. I'll explain. Let's imagine we're all mentors, and we're now sitting in mentoring training. And you have this simple but elusive question. The trainer should define the concept of mentoring. Mentoring consists of career support, social support, and role modeling to help a mentee grow. Additionally, the trainer should identify implicit questions you have. You may be scratching your head thinking, how do I provide social support? The trainer should identify procedures to implement mentoring. For example, an open door policy may be particularly effective to facilitate social support. A second complementary answer can be provided. Again, you may be wondering to yourself, why am I sitting here in this training? I'm a busy person. I'm important. I have other things to do. The trainer needs to establish a theoretical relationship between mentoring and desired outcomes. The trainer needs to point out that mentoring is positively related to mentee satisfaction, mentee career progression, job performance. In so doing, the mentor understands how important their role is. In so doing, you're all in. In sum, providing complementary answers reinforce each other. In this example, the mentor knows what to do, how to do, and why to do it. A circumplex also holds that opposite answers resist each other. Consider this example. We go to the movies for the stories. We go to the movie of Julia Childs for her life story, not to learn the steps in her recipes. For that, we go to PBS. High AQ Habit 4 is answer with style. There are three answer styles that each appeal to distinct communication goals. The goal of the relational style is to make a personal and emotional connection. The goal of the practical style is to achieve a tangible task. The goal of the analytical style is to explain and predict in a complex world. When you paint your masterpiece, you will have three colors to blend together. Let's take a look at the answer styles of Steve Jobs and Apple during critical points in their history. Let's analyze the original iPhone using the analytical style. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? Apple is smart and easy. Why does Apple exist? Steve Jobs is a force of gravity so strong he bent our expectations for what a company could achieve. Companies typically achieve or strive for profits or seemingly enlightened goals like loyalty. Apple's goal? Love. If the iPhone is smart and easy, you will love it. Let's get emotionally connected to iTunes using the relational style. iTunes is a jukebox. For you millennials, let me introduce you to a jukebox. A jukebox was smart technology in its day. It could store an entire record collection and serve up each record like magic. And it was easy. Just put in a dime. And when the music played, you loved it. Let's take a hands-on tour of the Apple Store using the practical style. Wouldn't it be great if when you went to buy a computer, or after you bought a computer, if you had any questions, you could ask 
a genius. Well, that's what we've got. This is called the genius bar. How do we work with Apple? We use the genius bar because it is smart and easy, and we love it. For those of you keeping track, one question remains. Who should ask the questions and who should provide the answers? Research in education has consistently shown from kindergarten to higher ed that teachers ask most of the questions. This same research also holds that students only learn when they ask the questions. In the mountains that you climb, I hope that you inspire others to ask the important questions. And when these important questions are asked, I hope you're ready to provide a hand up. I hope you're ready to provide elevated answers for meaningful change. I hope that you have high AQ. Thank you.